Hello and thank you for watching. I'm Ashley Van Dyke with Advantage Software, and on today's video I'm going to show you how to use the Backup and Restore function under the Tools menu. This function is different than the one available under the File Manager, and its use may be desirable for some users in some circumstances. The Backup and Restore functions are located under the Tools menu. If I go to Tools, you see that both Backup and Restore are present. If I go to Backup, I'm given the option of what type of files I'd like to back up. I can choose Main Dictionary, User Settings, as well as Work Files. For this first example, I'm just going to leave Main Dictionary and User Settings checked and hit Next. Next, it lets me choose which users I'd like to back up. I'm going to go ahead and just choose my regular Ashley user and hit Next. And in this window, it gives me the option of where I would like to choose to back my files up to. There are four different options, an external location, the backup directory, the auxiliary directory, as well as browse. The first three options are all paths that can be set in Eclipse. By default, only the backup directory is set. This is the Eclipse backups folder on the root of your C drive, and it's where all of your backup files that are created automatically by Eclipse are saved. You can make backups to this location if desired. However, they will be on the computer rather than on an external directory. The external and auxiliary locations can both be pathed to any location on your computer or on an external drive in the file locations area of the programming tab in your user settings. The auxiliary directory can also be set under Alt U in advanced. The browse option, however, will simply give you a window that will ask you where you would like to send the files. For this first example, I'm going to go ahead and just choose browse and press finish. And if I scroll down here and select my USB drive, I can hit OK to save the files there. I'm going to first open my USB drive. And you see that right now there's no files on it. I'm going to go back to Eclipse ensure that my USB drive is highlighted and press OK. Eclipse reports that the function is complete. And if I go back to my USB drive, you see that my user INI file, my main dictionary, as well as my spell files have automatically been backed up to my USB drive. With the browse function, you can choose any location attached to your computer to save files to with a single step. I'm gonna go ahead and remove these files that I've backed up in this step. And if I re return to Eclipse, I can go to User Settings, Programming tab, and File Locations. And you see that in here I do not have an aux equals or an external equals line. That means that those aren't set up to any particular location, and so if I choose those in the backup tool, the files will not automatically go where I want them to go. What I can do is at the bottom here I can hit Add, and I am going to choose aux for generic auxiliary, and I'll press OK, and I'm going to scroll down to my USB drive. And instead of making this just the root of my USB drive, I'm actually going to make a folder for the auxiliary directory. I'll select the USB drive and hit Make New Folder, and I'm going to call this Auxiliary. I'll hit Enter to save the name I've typed, and then I'll make sure that Auxiliary is selected, and press OK. You see now that I have a line that says aux equals e auxiliary. So when I choose to copy files to my auxiliary directory, they're going to go into the auxiliary folder. I'm going to hit Add again, and this time I'm going to choose External, and I'm going to do the same kind of thing. I'm going to choose External and press OK. I'm going to go down to my USB drive, and you see that I have the auxiliary folder I could choose, but instead I'm going to hit Make New Folder again, and I'll call this folder External. I'll select that External folder and press OK. And now I have external equals e slash external and auxiliary equals e slash auxiliary. So both of these locations are available for me to back up to now, and I'll show you how they work. I'm going to hit OK out of here. And really quick, I'm going to go to the user tab of my user settings. And if I hit advanced, you see that here next to the auxiliary button, the e slash auxiliary folder has automatically been filled in. This path is the same as what displays in file locations. If you change it here, it'll change in file locations. If I change aux equals in file locations, it'll change it here under Alt U Advanced. I'm going to go back up to Tools and Backup. 
I'm going to select my main dictionary and user settings again. This time I'm going to choose both of my users and hit next. And I'm going to select my external location. I'll hit finish. The file operation is complete. I'll press OK. And if I open up my USB drive and go into the external folder, you see that all five of those files are here. Since my V10 user is a copy of my regular user, it uses the same dictionary and spell files, and so I have only gotten one copy of each of those. All of these files have been correctly backed up, just like I asked, to the external location. And if I go into the auxiliary folder, since I haven't saved anything there yet, that folder is empty. I'm going to go to Tools and Back Up again. This time I'm going to choose just Work Files and press Next. And I'm going to select the files that I'd like to back up. All of the files in my Jobs folder are located here. Each of my job file file types are located in this window, and I can choose to back up each portion of each job that I desire. So I'm going to scroll down, and I'm going to choose to back up my sample file. And I'm going to back up one of my real-time files. And you see that for my real-time file, I have a dictionary, an ECL, a note file, and three WAV files. For my sample file, I only have a dictionary, an ECL, and a note file. I'm going to leave both of those jobs entirely checked and press Next. And for my job files, I'm going to choose to save these into the auxiliary directory instead of my external directory. I'm going to use the external one just for dictionaries and settings, and I'm going to use the auxiliary directory for jobs. So I'll choose Auxiliary Directory and hit Finish. And Eclipse has finished copying those files. If I look on my external USB drive and into the Auxiliary folder, you see that all of the files I chose to back up have been saved onto the USB drive for me. I'm going to go back into Eclipse, and I'm going to delete the files that I backed up. I'm going to delete Sample File and I'm going to delete the real-time file ending in 0813. I'll hit Delete, and Yes to delete the files. And what I can do now is go to Tools and Restore, and I can choose the complementary directory where my files are stored. Since my job files are on the auxiliary directory, I'm going to choose my auxiliary directory to restore the files from, and I'll hit Next, and all of those files are available for me to choose and I can click on each of the files to highlight them, or I can hit Select or Deselect All. I'm going to choose to re-import all of the files, and I'll hit Finish. And Eclipse has already finished that operation. And if I go to my File Manager, you see that I have Sample File and my real-time file ending in 0813. All of the files have been restored, and I can continue working on these files. Dictionary files work the same way. If I open my main dictionary, you see that I have 59,130 entries, and what I'm going to do is delete them all. I've highlighted all of my entries, and I'm going to hit the Delete key. Clips has asked me if I'm sure I wish to delete them, and I'll hit Yes. And my dictionary is now em empty. I'm going to close out of my dictionary, and I'll close out of Eclipse. I'll open Eclipse up, and I'm going to choose my user INI file. And if I open my dictionary, it is indeed blank. So what I'm going to do is go to Tools and Restore again. I chose to save my user settings and my dictionary to the external drive. So I'm going to choose the external location and hit Next. And my ashley.dix is here. I'm going to select that and hit Finish. It informs me that this file is already present, the ashley.dix file, and asks me if I want to overwrite it. Since my dictionary is currently empty, that's definitely what I want. I'm going to hit Yes, and it says File Operation Complete, and I'll press OK. And if I go to Dictionary and open it up, you see that at the bottom, again, I have 59,130 entries. So even though I deleted every single one of my entries, I was able to quickly and immediately restore them in only a few mouse clicks. Using the Tools Backup and Restore function allows you to quickly and easily move jobs between computers, especially if you have the same path set up for your external devices on all of your computers. The Tools Backup and Restore functions are preferable for some people versus using the File Manager functions. Whichever functions you're most comfortable with or find easiest to use are the right ones to use.
I hope that you'll explore both functions to see which ones are right for you. Thank you for watching this video. As a reminder, Advantage Software offers anytime support 24 7. Tech support can be reached anytime, including weekends and holidays, at 772 288 3266. Please let us know if you have any questions about any of the backup or restore functions featured in this video, or any other questions about any of Eclipse's other great features, or any of Advantage Software's other amazing products. Email support is additionally available at support at eclipsecat.com. Please reach out to us if you have any questions about anything. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications so that you'll be notified when we publish new content. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.